Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Uh, this is the second game based on the White Wolf RPG board game. The first one was called Redemption. This particular game was, it, well basically it's called Bloodlines, obviously. And it was developed by a developer, developing group, company, called Troika. Now Troika was disbanded, dissolved, shut down by its publisher Activision shortly after this game was published. And so there's a lot, there was a lot of remaining bugs and inconsistencies and problems with the with the actual gameplay itself. It released in 2004 and it uses Valve's Source Engine. I believe it's the second game released which uses Source Engine. The first being Half-Life 2 itself. Nobody knows why Troika was shut down. But for years and years after and still to this day there's a hardcore fanatical base of modders headed by one Wesp5 who developed the unofficial patch. Now the unofficial patch comes in two flavours. There's the unofficial patch only does bug fixes and so things like that. And there's a patch plus. You download the unofficial patch and you can choose which one you want to install. It's in the same package. I've put patch plus. Patch plus adds missing or deleted information, it's sort of deleted data, storylines, quests, things like that, into the original game. That's information that was already in the game but was not used. Some of which was actually shown at some of the E3. I believe to E3 2003 and 2004, some of those deleted parts were actually shown as if those were actually in the game, but it turned out they actually wasn't. The unofficial patch plus puts those back in. I have a Sweet FX EMB installed into the game, so it improves the lighting. I also have HD textures as well. I haven't played this game for a long time and I was amazed to find that West 5 was still developing an official patch and there were still other mods as well still available. Okay so I'm going to do I'm going to play through the game obviously hope you join me for that if at any point you like any of these videos in the series, click like, click share, and subscribe for more. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to go through the character. I'm going to go through the, the the choices rather than hand sort of crafting my own through the craft of the character sheet. I'm going to click on new game. Okay, so a new game starts with creating a new character. Would you like to? Now this is the section I said earlier on. You can either answer a set of questions and the game hand sort of creates a character for you based on your response to those questions. I can go directly to the character sheet and you can actually just put points in yourself manually. I think it's a bit more interesting if you go through the questions. The thing about answering the questions is the fact you, you can't do some of the patch plus and unlock the unofficial patch options which is create like a little, like a little history for your character but you haven't got history, you, you, you're newly sired. So we'll, we'll go through. So we're mill. So you're in the hospital looking for the doctor who's late on his blood payments. A nurse steps in front of you and says you can't go in there, it's restricted to medical staff only. Do you want toss for a like a rag doll and keep going? Two, show her your fangs and said they're fleeing in fear for a life. Well, you know, I mean people can wear clear teeth, can't they? So it's not exactly a masquerade violation to do that. I think throwing someone across a room 
revealing your supernatural strength with Polly a people wondering a bit more. And you can always, you can have you can have clear teeth, like I said, clear fangs like they do in the films and movies. So I think show your fangs and then fleeing for a life. A bouncer at the opening of an exclusive nightclub won't let you inside to party with all the beautiful people. Do you want to convince him you work for that director, you know who, and you'll bring him the, with you the next time. 2. Hide out by the back exit, wait for someone to leave and then slip in undetected. 3. Bribe him, everyone's got their price and it's worth it to get to know the kind of people inside. Bribe him. Three. You were mugged last night. It wasn't life threatening, but you want to make you want to take some measures to make sure that if it happens again, you aren't defenseless. Do you want sign up for martial arts classes? Next time they try, you'll break their spine. Two, start carrying a knife and consulting your belt. Next person who tries it breathes through a hole in their neck. Bit nasty. Three, buy a gun. The next mugger is sidewalk mate. Martial arts classes, yes. Some drunken mortals attempt to pick a fight with you in a bar. Do you want trash the place with the fool's broken bodies? Two, clear the place out with a mere wave of your hand. Trash the place, that's why you took the lessons last in the last question. You just started playing that new kill cool computer game, but it is full of bugs. Do you? 1. Get onto several forms and complain about the issue. 2. Email the developers themselves to get the game fixed. 3. Decide to look into the code yourself to patch it up. Get onto the forms and make a lot of noise about it. That's what most people do. It's late. You're at the red spot waiting for your microwave burrito to heat up. There are three arcade games to waste some time on. Which one do you play? 1. Fighting game. I pull off the triple flash up a cut as a finisher every time. 2. That beat em up game where you can pick up the bat and womp on the hordes of generic thugs. Or 3. That sniper game with a realistic gun for a controller. Well, the sniper game sounds cool. As you're walking home late at night, you hear footsteps, glance back, and suddenly realise someone is following you. 1. Turn to confront them. 2. Duck behind a tree to lose them. Turn to confront them. You want to turn this first date into a second one. How do you do it? 1. Look at me. I mean, you wouldn't want another dose of this. Who wouldn't want another dose of this? Alright. Did that one wrong? I'll start again. 1. Look at me. I mean, who wouldn't want another dose of, di of this? 2. Intelligent conversation. The right wine. Ordering in the language of the ethnic food. Go on then, two. Yes. Need to carry a dictionary in that particular language there, but now we've got a phrase book under the table. If you got into a fight against an armed opponent, would you rather, one, take them on barehanded, it's more satisfying. If they're armed, two, shoot first, ponder the consequences later. So they're an armed opponent and you think, one, take them out with your bare hands. The world's a cool and unforgiving place, but you've gone by so far. Why? One, someone gets in my way, I kick their ass. That's why. Two, when you're as talented and attractive as I am, the world is your plaything. Go on in two. <coughs> Toriador? Hmm. You have been embraced by the Toreador clan, known as artists, visionaries and members of high society. Toreadors have a great connection with the mortal world through arts and entertainment. Masters of communication and social skills, Toreadors fit right in with the mortals who adore them. Toreador. Okay. Okay, your vampire's attributes and abilities have now been determined and entered into its character sheet, which you will see next. After your turn of the character sheet, you may make changes to the character or simply play as it is.
So we've got... Yeah, so we're not very physical. Impairments and manipulation. We've got fire at one point in firearms. Melee, security, stealth, none of those. Scholarship, investigation. We've got two in wits. Nothing intimidation. So. Yeah, we know that. The gift of gab. So the, the strongest is manipulation, the appearance. And wits. You have to have wit. You know, to be able to talk to people and, uh, you know, come up with sort of clever things to say. I'm going to get rid of this help stuff because I already know all this. Okay, so this is what we start with. Unarmed combat is two. Melee combat is well, no, it's holding a weapon, a knife, or, or you know, it's like what it says there. It's part of the melee combat feat and knives and knives and clubs. Anything you'd hold in your hand and hit someone with, you're not too clever with that. But unarmed combat, we've got two points. Range combat, which is obviously guns. You have two points now. Combat defense. So combat defense we're quite high in three. So we can defend ourselves. So measures your ability to avoid taking damage of all types in combat. Hacking is two. Thanks to wits, but nothing in computer. So if we put one point in there, obviously we don't have anything, but we could bring it up to three. As long as we don't take one off the wits section as well. We've got haggle, manipulation. It's all part of manipulation and appearance, but if you have something in finance, that is a basic knowledge. Is that something you can pick up? You can actually pick books up throughout the entire game world and you can actually learn new skills. As long as the base is met for the book. Whereas sometimes a book might have a base four, you may only have two or three, which means you couldn't read the book until you come to a particular level of scholarship and intelligence which is part of the research. So you've got intelligence and scholarships. These basically are combinations of these attributes, social skills and disciplines are inherent to your character which you can boost. Your all specs, celebrity which is speed, presence which obviously gives you, you know, sort of penalties and, and boosts other things while it's in effect. Level 3, level 4, level 5, and so on. Okay, let's accept that. <laughs> I want to show you something. Good evening. My fellow kindred, my apologies for disrupting any business or interfering with prior engagements you may have had this evening. It's unfortunate that the affair that gathers us together tonight is a troubling one. We are here because the laws that bind our society, the laws that are the fabric of our existence, have been broken. As prince, I am within my rights to grant or deny the kindred of this city the privilege of siring. Many of you have come to me seeking permission, and I have endorsed some of these requests. However, the accused that sits before you tonight was not refused permission. Indeed, my permission was never sought at all. They were caught shortly after the embrace of this child. It pains me to announce the sentence, as up to tonight I considered the accused a loyal and upstanding member of our organization. 
but as some of you may know, the penalty for this transgression is death. Know that I am no more adjudicator than I am a servant to the law that governs us all. Let tonight's proceedings serve as a reminder to our community that we must adhere to the code that binds our society, lest we endanger all of our blood. Forgive me. Let the penalty commence. Which leads to the fate of the ill-begotten progeny. Without a sire, most child are doomed to walk the earth never knowing their place, their responsibility, and most importantly, the laws they must obey. Therefore, I have decided that this is bullshit! If Mr. Rodriguez would let me finish, I have decided to let this kindred live. They shall be instructed in the ways of our kind and be granted the same rights. Let no one say I am unsympathetic to the plights and causes of this community. I thank you all for attending these proceedings, and I hope their significance is not lost. Good evening. Your sire. Tragic. My apologies. But you see, there is a strict code of conduct that all of us must... must... adhere to if we wish to survive. When someone, anyone, breaks these laws, they undermine the well-worn fabric of our centuries-old society. Understand my predicament. Allowing you to live makes me directly responsible for your subsequent behavior. So... What I'm offering is not generosity, but the opportunity to transcend the fate woven by your sire. This is your trial. You will be brought to Santa Monica. There, you will meet an agent by the name of Mercurio. He will provide the details of your labor. I've shown you great clemency. Prove it was more than a wasted gesture, fledgling. Don't come back until you do. Good evening.